I went to IGA and I got some uh, Becca, Becca food. Anybody would like to have it, Sam? So? You're welcome. You could come up and get it later. That's what they ate in that movie, Becca, Becca. It was a great movie, you have to admit it. <laughs> you don't see that stuff so often right now. They don't make that, they really don't make it like that anymore. And uh, uh, this is uh, GJ, if you're here, please see me after the show, okay? Uh, anybody knows Derek Manganelli? Apparently, he's not reachable at his telephone number. If anybody knows, please see me after the show. So this is, this, uh, these are the announcements before the sermon. Becca, Becca. Um, where do we start tonight? We have a great movie, so I'll be short. Uh, to begin with, I'll say that um, I do meet people uh, five or ten generations Americans who call themselves um, Italians I know Germans said I come from Calabria he doesn't even know what the hell Calabria is in Italy Because they came either from Philadelphia or Chicago or St. Louis, someplace here. Ten generations ago, some people came from perhaps from Mozambique or Serbia or even Calabria. Even my uh, father in law came from Calabria, so I know what Calabria is. Uh, also, I know firsthand what it means I came from. I came from Lithuania. But it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not trying to be mean or bitter, but it has nothing to do with this. That's where I was born, so, so what the hell? I could have been born in Chicago. Perhaps not. Uh, uh, but, um, and people say, oh, I'm black, I'm white, I'm Indian, I'm American Indian, uh, I'm Italian Indian, Italian American, and uh, uh, Eskimo American. All these Americans are attached to all these people. Uh, even some of them call themselves natural Americans. What the hell is that? Uh, if I'm a Lithuanian American, it sounds like a joke. If you say that, I'm Lithuanian American. Yeah, so, so what? It's not even funny. Uh, or I'm Muslim, I'm a Catholic, or American. I don't know even what American means anymore you now. Or Jewish, or Protestant hater, or a Catholic hater, or a gay basher. It's, it's getting worse, actually. I saw a bumper here in the parking lot. It said, uh, Celebrate diversity. <laughs> if you think really what it means, they don't mean that. It means we are all different. They are trying to separate us. All these bumper stickers. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. They're emphasizing the difference between us. But that's what, what was not supposed to happen. There is no difference between us because all of us will go to hell sooner or later. <laughs> so we'll meet, shake hands, and say, oh, oh I see. Yeah. I didn't know you then, but no, here we are. So let's get them off our backs from splitting us into, I don't know, into different colors, different nationalities, different looks, perhaps, or and this has been going, you know, or getting worse. 
year after year in the past five or seven years that uh, I became aware of this. We can't see any more people as good people or bad people. Uh, we have to pigeonhole them. What's wrong with good people or bad people? They will get their comeuppance, so it's not our concern. About 15 years ago, uh, it was on television, on pa in papers everywhere, it was saying that the TV now will unite the world, will, we will become a global village. As you remember that expression, global village. It's all bull. <laughs> Today, every village in the whole global world wants to be independent. And every village hates another village because their village is better than theirs village. That's where the rub is. Right now, for example, I hate my neighbor, Randbeck. <laughs> He's a retired policeman. He carries a gun, he shoots snakes <laughs> under the porch because his, his wife is allergic to snakes and snakes know that. So they go after her. And uh, so he shoots snakes. <laughs> I hate him because I hate because I hate him not because he's ex policeman, perhaps, uh, uh, because we are of a different mental village. He's from different village, so I hate him. I know he hates me too. So it's mutual, but that's the way it should be, right? <laughs> There's no no. I have no problem with with that at all. Uh, but. On the other hand, I don't want to go back to the village. I grew up in one village. And what do you do on Saturday, Saturday night in the village? So, get some beer, let's go and beat daylights out of the other village. All right? So you go, get into a fight, you get beaten up, come back. So next, next week, next Saturday, we'll go and really kill them. That's what you do, right, in the village. What else? There's nothing much. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you keep making ropes. Ropes, that's good, yeah. When I got uh, educated, and not in school, but in the University of Life, uh, I stopped hating people. Uh, I stopped hating even Polacks. I sort of uh, feel sorry for them. <laughs> But uh, I don't hate them, really. Uh, uh, when I left my village, I grew up uh, in a culture where we were considered ourselves equal. And uh, we didn't think about what separated us. We considered or we thought about ourselves what distinguished us from each other by madness, obsession, talent, or lack of it. The, the, the difference was distinguishing what's, but not by classifying ourselves by color or age or anything else what's being done today. When I came to Bard, and that was in 71, we are still riding the last wave of um, the flower generation. Bard in 71 was a beautiful global village. It was. We loved each other. We spoke to each other. Whites, blacks. At that time, they still used the word Negro. That one was not an offensive word. Also, in classes, people s smoke pot openly. I know in my classes, they would be passing around <laughs> a joint. Nobody paid attention to that. There were no hard drugs, really, just pot. That's the flower generation syndrome. And today, Bard, Bard is breaking into villages. Just walk into the dining commons and see who is sitting with whom, or walk across campus and see who is walking with whom. 
blacks with blacks, Pakistani with Pakistani. Even in the post office, I noticed the French are speaking for themselves only in French. A forgotten language, actually, but they still use it. There are villages, small villages, tribes, no longer if it, villages that were in small tribes by now at Bard. I know I'm perhaps the most uh, politically incorrect of the professors here. I do tell Polish jokes and other ethnic jokes. I love Jewish jokes and Irish jokes. Because if you take ethnic jokes out of our life, there are no jokes anymore, only insults. So let's grow up. There's nothing wrong to tell a joke against each other unless you tell a Lutheranian joke, you better watch out. <laughs> you give me your name and when the crowd sheets come out, I'll, you'll just see what happens. We have publications. I picked one up. You saw this publication. And uh, they said student center, it has to be campus center, they call it. Called Free Voices. What it means, and it says here, it's a publication by women, for women, not for women. They can publish only writings by women. This is where political correctness is really went berserk. Imagine if you guys, who are not women, would publish a publication that only men would be published. You know, the next day you would be lynched by all these women who wrote for this magazine. <laughs> you would be lynched. But now, men said, oh yeah, politically correct. Of course they can have this publication only for women. Bullshit. I won't read, I refuse to read even. <laughs> it's not right. Either we're equals or we are in two different villages. And I hate villages. So I won't read this publication. I know that few of you who published in this are in this class. Now, of course, now it is all right to hate other people. It's, um, but that's what political correctness brought us to. Uh, and uh, political correctness brought what's known as multiculturalism. To me, multiculturalism is anti-culture. Look in the bookstore, even Bard bookstore and other bookstores, you'll find sections marked. Gay and lesbian studies, Native American studies, women's studies, Afro-American studies, and all these studies, and intellectual disciplines designated not by methods, but by the subject. Thus, that we learn is not to understand but sort of to heal the past wrongs done by somebody else. Heal white uh, uh, sexual males of the superiority complex and give other people back their sort of pride. I don't know what the, all that means. This, these are quotes from um, magazines. Bring down the offenders, raise up the offended. Such is the mission of the humanities in the year of multiculturalism. For example, the game uh, male or female would do what in the past used to be known as um, sort of um, courting, flirting. Today, that is sexual harassment. I was corrected not long ago when I met a woman in the, uh, walking on the, from the Ludlow, and she was so well-dressed, beautifully dressed. And I, I stopped it. I said, you, 
oh, wow, that's, you, you look so beautiful, you look great. Said, and of course she smiled, she acknowledged the uh, uh, compliment, but somebody walking by said, you know that's a sexual harassment? A compliment becomes sexual harassment now? I don't know what to do. All this correctness and multiculturalism is becoming sort of an inquisition. We are going back to the 16th century in Spain. You know that we have a dean for multicultural affairs? A dean? <laughs> I know we have so many deans. We have like 17 deans at college by now, so I don't think it means very much, but still, somebody's being hard just to see that you are multiculturally correct. And somebody's being paid good money, I presume, and all the fringe benefits. Also, multiculturalism sort of watered down our education. Uh, at Bard, now, it is uh, our course list reads like a schmuggersborg. Really? Sample this, sample that. Uh, if, I wanted to, if I wanted to study Islam culture, for example, uh, or Islam religion, uh, would I come to Bard? Or chemistry, for that matter? Would I come to Bard? <laughs> Let me turn it around and the other way to see this point. Would you go to Japan to study Florentine art? <laughs> or to Russia to study Appalachian folklore? <laughs> but that's what we're doing at Bard, in reverse order. You could study anything now at Bard. That's multiculturalism. <laughs> you could study any religion, any culture here now. <coughs> It's like uh, this Culinary Institute of America in, uh, in Poughkeepsie there, where they have uh, three-week courses to graduate U.S. chefs and culinary craft. And they have two-hour lecture demonstration in Chinese cooking. And they get a certificate as being Chinese cooks. That's what's happening at Bard. <laughs> yeah, you get a certificate. Bard was supposed to be a liberal arts co college, artes liberales, but what's becoming right now, and that was the strength of Bard throughout the years. It's uh, artes schmogger borgeses now. <laughs> It's a good example. This is a senior project. I won't give it the name. I'll just read the title. You know when you graduate, the publisher's